Welcome to the presentation on reflection by the plane mirror. So with reflection we get to see an image in a mirror okay? and we're only going to be talking about flat mirrors today. Um, so you should be able to think about what's the real object, what's the imaginary image in this case. Hopefully you'll be able to obviously see muscly Homer is definitely not the real Homer and the real object is here. This is just an introduction just to get you familiar with the terminology. So we talk about things that are real as being the object or the real object and things that are in s you see in the mirror are either virtual images or imaginary images and we can explain later why they're called those things. So when you look into a mirror you see that letters appear backwards. This is called lateral inversion. Other interesting things happen with mirrors and one of them is that uh, if the object is say five centimeters from the mirror where the image appears it appears to be five centimeters into the mirror or five centimeters deep into the mirror. Okay so how do we normally see things? So let's say we're looking at this object, this arrow, okay, and I want to think about what would happen that would allow me to see the tip of this arrow. So in physics we like to use models to explain things, and the model we have for light is that light travels in straight lines, we call these lines rays, we could call them anything we wanted, but it travels in straight lines, and uh, it may be reflected off a surface, but normally when we, we see something, those straight lines travel towards our eye, uh, so here you can imagine that light's hitting the surface of this arrow, it's being reflected off in all directions and uh, as you see in all directions and wherever the eye looks from uh, these rays reach the eye and inside the eye something happens if you look at thin converging lenses, if you look at my video on thin converging lenses we can see exactly what that is. Um, but basically you can think of it for now if you're not familiar with thin converging lenses as that the eye can kind of trace back those rays to that point uh, but actually something else does happen. But uh, what happens when you have an object in front of a mirror? Okay. Well, with reflection, any rays that strike the arrow and bounce off the arrow and then hit the mirror, when they hit the mirror they will follow the law of reflection, which is that this purple angle must equal this red angle, or the angle of incidence must equal the angle of reflection. If we think of all the rays that are going to come off the arrow and hit the mirror, well not all of them, but most, most of them, okay, you'll get something like this. Now to an eye looking at those rays it appears as though, as though wherever you look from it appears as though those rays came from a point behind the mirror um, and you could do it for say the bottom of the arrow and draw all the rays coming off that and you'd find that they appear to have come from the bottom of the arrow in the image. And uh, a couple of properties that this shows is that the distance of the object in front of the mirror is the same as the distance from the mirror surface to the image in, in the, uh, inside the mirror. Okay, so now let's have a look at how to actually draw ray diagrams in your exam. So we're going to look at two methods. Method two is the one I would do in an exam, but method one is worth looking at. So in the diagram the mirror is represented by this straight line with a hatch at the back. We draw in an observer's eye, which could go anywhere actually, and this time I've chosen to draw the real object to this face with one eye as crossed or one eye winking. So to discover where the winking eye would appear as an image, we need to draw a minimum of two rays coming off the winking eye and being reflected towards the eye. So if we follow the law of reflection we need to draw a normal line on and measure the angle of incidence to the normal line and then mirror that angle of incidence in the reflected line. So here in the red line it's 26 degrees and I've mirrored it with 26 degrees. And then you choose uh, you do another ray from the same point and uh, but landing at a different point on the mirror and you draw in using the, the same rule again angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. This time it was 39 degrees so I have to measure again 39 degrees to be reflected. And what you get arriving at the eye is these two rays which are slightly diverging the red and the uh, green ray. But to the eye it appears as though these rays came from a point in the distance uh, where they cross and that is where the eye would appear. So the white lines I've drawn on are virtual lines, they aren't real, they're just imaginary and uh, the real rays were the reflected rays. Now just to give you another chance to see this happen and be drawn, uh, I'm going to do it for the eye that's open 
and follow exactly the same rules. I'm going to draw two rays from the point I want to discover the position of the image in the mirror and uh, reflect them off the surface of the mirror towards the eye and then discover where they appear to have come from. Now it's interesting to note that you could draw thousands of rays coming off that one point on the eye, all hitting the mirror and following the law of reflection. And if you followed them all back, they would all cross at the point where they are crossing when you do it with two. But uh, it's worth doing just to uh, convince yourself of how reflection works. So now we're tracing the rays back to find out where they appear to have come from to the eye. One of the problems with this method is that it's difficult to do accurately due to all the angle measurements. This image is not actually laterally inverted because it's a 2D image, but in a real situation where you've got a 3D object, you will have lateral inversion as well. The image is also not made with real rays, but virtual rays. This makes it a virtual image. The image also appears the same distance behind the mirror as it does in front. Because it's a plane mirror or a flat mirror, we know that the image will appear the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. So we can just cheat and measure that distance and put the cross in. Then just drawing rays from that point to the eye, two straight lines, and uh, making it clear which rays are real and which ones are virtual by rubbing out lines, uh, we can get very quickly to the full ray diagram adding normal lines just to make it look like you did actually measure those angles uh, just makes it look a bit more authentic. So again measuring the distance from the open eye and then measuring it behind and again just do two straight lines towards the observer's eye uh, rubbing out the lines on some of them to make them look virtual rays leaving the rest and now finishing the diagram you can see the incoming rays are reflected angle of incidence equals angle of reflection and it all works out okay so I've put some key points about the plane mirror for you to have a read at your leisure uh, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and if you found it useful please share it like it subscribe to the channel and uh, if you have any comments please make them and I'll be happy to respond goodbye